その身長で空中戦を制したいとこの身長だからです He's short, he's fast, he has a stubborn streak a mile long, and he's quite possibly the next big thing in Japanese volleyball. Well, in the anime world, that is. Hinata Shoyo is the epitome of how dogged determination and a never say die attitude can make you excel at something, even if you don't have the physical attributes for it. In the six years we've got to know the boys at Garasuno, we've rooted and cheered for this little giant as he made a place for himself in the volleyball team's starting lineup with nothing but his incredible speed and jumping abilities to rely on, and in those Six years, he's either making us roll in laughter with his silliness or startling us with his game sense. So, as the fourth season of Haikyu nears its end, it's time to recount some of the best Hinata moments from the show. I've done one set of this already, so this is volume two. Starting off the list is Hinata Smash Shocks Nekoma. Let's get things started with what Hinata does best the quick. An extremely fast attack form created by the freak duo of Hinata and Kageyama, it can catch even the most prepared opponent off guard. And that's exactly what happens when Hinata and Kageyama unleash their biggest weapon in the very first play of Garasuno's practice match against old rival Nekoma. The expressions of shock on the faces of the Nekoma players and coaching staff show just how potent and unexpected this attack. Is. What perplexes the opposing team even more than the attack is the fact that Hinata has his eyes tightly shut all the time, even while connecting with Kageyama's toss. As far as first impressions go, Hinata makes a strong one on Nekoma. <laughs> Next up, Hinata inspires Yachi to become their manager. Hinata's talents don't just lie in volleyball. He's also great at encouraging and bringing out the best in others with his honest talk, even if it's unintentional. We see it when he helps Asahi regain his confidence as the team's ace. And we see it again when he helps the self-doubting Yachi face her fears as she struggles with the decision to become Garasuno's next manager. Hinata doesn't necessarily set out to make her believe she's up to the task, he's just being himself and acting in his own nonchalant manner. And yet, the effects of his words on Yachi is deep. All her doubts fade when she asks him why he tries so hard to win. Hinata's simple answer is, do you need a reason to win? Profound words indeed from a guy who usually speaks in excitable bangs and whooshes. Coming in at 8, Hinata beats Dateko's read blocking. This is another demonstration of Hinata's supersonic speed. And this one comes against the team with arguably the strongest defense of all, Dateko and its famed Iron War. In their first matchup, Garasuno find most of their attack shut down by Dateko's read blocking, a technique in which the blocker watches where the toss goes and reacts accordingly. Hinata too can't seem to get any of his quicks through when he's up against the rival team's formidable number 7, Aone. But as the Garasuno boys know too well, the the deadly thing about the free quick isn't the attack itself, but how they use it. So, Hinata does get one past the iron wall, making jaws drop on the other side of the net. As Kageyama puts it, even Datago's read blocking is no match for Hinata's speed, and we couldn't agree more. <laughs> Hinata stealing Asahi's ball makes it to number 7. That sounded a bit weird, didn't it? Okay, anyway, we have a moment when Hinata's obsession with being the best makes him look almost selfish, especially to those who don't know him well. Garasuno are in the midst of their practice session against Nekoma in the Tokyo Expedition Arc, focused intently on his one-on-one -on -one with the ginormous Lev and excited at going up against some really strong opponents. Hinata rushes in for a ball that's clearly intended for Asahi, colliding with the ace and costing his team a point. Stealing a team Mate's thunder is the worst kind of behavior for a sportsman. The gleam of excitement in Hinata's eyes as he goes for the ball clearly shows he wasn't acting out of self-interest. He may not have meant to steal Asahi's ball in the end, but that's what his actions amount to. However, as the Nekoma coach wisely notes, a player who wants to reach the summit must be greedy to do so. And we all know that if it's that type of good greed, then Hinata has plenty of it. <laughs>
Up next, Hinata smashes one over Oikawa's head. For the first two seasons, the highlight of Haikyuu is Garasuno's rivalry with Seijo, which produces some brilliant play and memorable moments. This is largely due to Seijo's set to Oikawa's godly skills, bossy personality, and more importantly, his determination to take the sting out of Gagiyama and Hinata's partnership, mostly for his own personal reasons. But that's not to say Hinata will let Oikawa have his way all the time. For our number six pick, let's take a look at this very impactful fight back by the Little Crow. It comes at a crucial moment during the two teams match at the Inter High Tournament. Staring at match point, Hinata turns a desperate one-handed toss from Kagiyama into a powerful smash that goes right over Oikawa's head, giving the rival set a little chance to react to it, let alone deal with it. Oikawa still has the last laugh in the match though, but it's nice to see our favourite sadist at a loss every once in a while. Hinata blocking Ushijima comes in at number 5. If Seijo are the team to beat first, Shiro Torizawa take over that role in the third season. This is one team Karasuno can't afford to slack off on even for a second, and it's headed by one of the three All Japan aces. Ushijima is tall and hell of a player, everything that Hinata aspires to be. Both his serve and spike are close to unreturnable, but even a powerhouse can stumble when faced with the unpredictable phenomenon that is Hinata. At one point of their match at the Spring High, Ushijima is on the verge of hitting one of his powerful spikes when Hinata not only blocks it, but scores a point to his cost. This is quite possibly the best receive and block we've seen Hinata pull off in the entire series. As for Ushijima, who wants to not just defeat but crush Hinata completely, this has got to hurt. <laughs> Crowning King Kageyama comes in next. If there's anything as important to Hinata as volleyball, it's his partnership with Kageyama. They are the freak duo after all, feeding off each other's competitiveness. But the two have come a long way since Hinata, in a fit of nerves, sent his serve flying into the back of Kageyama's head. They're now a team with a deep understanding of each other, even if they don't express it in words. We see this in Season 4, as Kageyama struggles to be more assertive, but is held back by his poor communication skills and his experience of having been a tyrant no one wanted to play with in his junior high days. The king of the court nickname he earned then still rankles him. Seeing Kageyama struggle, Hinata encourages him to be himself by throwing the setter's own words back at him, reminding him that the setter is the most dominant and coolest player on the court. Hinata then crowns Kageyama the new king of the court, complete with a towel crown, and helps him put his demons to rest once and for all. Well, that's Hinata's soft power for you. <laughs> On to the top three now, and to start things off, Hinata shows us that he deserves to be on the court for more than just his quicks and gravity defying jumps. He is also the greatest decoy after all. At a standstill in their match against Seijo, and with the rival team pulling ahead, Garasuno needs to rack up some points and fast. After a stamina draining rally, Gagiyama tosses to Asahi for a winning spike, deciding that the condition is just right to execute a pipe attack. The condition being that all of Seijo's eyes are glued to Hinata, following his every move as he scrambles around the court, shouting for the ball and making a spectacle of himself. Right up until that moment of contact, Hinata makes Seijo believe that he'll be receiving the toss. By Kageyama's own admission, Hinata's indeed the ultimate decoy because he almost made him hand the toss over to him. High praise from the reticent Kageyama? Now that's something to crow about. <laughs> In the runner-up spot, we have Hinata's body blocks. While he's instinctive and intelligent with his spikes and attacks and an excellent decoy, Hinata's not the best receiver in the business despite being a middle blocker and tasked with the team's defense. But he still gets the job done with sheer stubbornness and a refusal to give up. By now, he's almost a legend at receiving the ball with his face, which infuriates Kageyama no end, making the set to remind him every now and then that that's not how one receives in volleyball. Four seasons later, and in his first match at the Nationals, Hinata is 
is still struggling to find his rhythm and the right position to receive. He receives one ball on his chest and follows it up with one to his shoulder, having got the timing wrong both times. This despite a huge improvement in his overall game, courtesy of the gruelling practice sessions during the Tokyo Expedition. Well, you can't win them all, can you? And I guess receiving with your chest beats getting hit on the head with a flying ball any day. Also, to Hinata's credit, he's super quick to regain his balance and be ready for the next shot even after flubbing a receive. <laughs> Hinata crashes training camp, makes it to the top spot. If there's one thing you can count on Hinata for apart from his lethal quicks, it's his unpredictability. And if there's anything that switches on his competitive mode, it's the idea of falling behind. So when Kagiyama is invited to the National Youth Training Camp in Tokyo and Tsukishima gets a call up to join a special practice session for first year players at Shira Torizawa, you certainly don't expect him to sit still and take it lying down. But did anyone actually expect him to crash the Shira Torizawa training camp as he did? I certainly don't think so. His audacious actions leave even the sharp-tongued Tsukishima at a loss for words and clearly more embarrassed than his teammate. Hinata's gate crashing doesn't result in an invitation to join the camp, but he does get to stay back, which he's completely okay with. As for his reason for picking this training camp over the more prestigious one in Tokyo, you've got to hear it to believe it. We're not going to spoil it for you here, so go and check out the anime. And in these six years, we've seen Hinata evolve into a player of far greater potential and talent. With his natural ability and lively personality, he's given us numerous moments of pure joy. We've talked about our personal favourite moments of his from the last few seasons, highlighting those we think have shown off the best parts of him. But what have been your favourite moments from the series? Let us know in the comments below and make sure you check out Volume 1 as well. Thanks so much for watching this video. Be sure to leave a like, subscribe for more great anime content and turn on the bell notification so you never miss a single one of our countdown videos. I'll see you next time on the TV Regent.